Okay, I'd like to call this regular school board meeting of the Pelmire Eagle Area School District District to order at 710. Can we have the roll call? Yep. Tara Leroy? Here. Michael Eddy? Here. Jean Reed? Here. Doris Parsons? Here. Zach Mikowski? Here. Mitzi Groszewski? Here. And Christiana Williams? Here. Seeing we have a quorum, we'll continue. And I'll read the district mission statement. To ensure that students excel with intellect and virtue, inspired by innovative educators who engage and challenge each individual. Would you join me for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Agenda. Are there any amendments to the agenda? I make motion to amend action item 12A uh, to re have that removed and then action item B um, change that to consider approval of a purchase of a Ford Transit T150 XLT MR10 passenger Ford truck. Is there a second to that? Second to that. Any further discussion or amendments? No. All those in favor of approving the agenda as amended, say aye. 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 Opposed? Agenda is approved. Board monitoring, I don't believe we have any at this time. Board committee reports, public relations met on January 21st. Tara? Yes. We did have any public comments, right? We did, we did not receive any via email. There is no one except, okay, thank you for pointing that out, but no, we do not. Okay. Uh, so the public relations, the public relations committee met on January 21st. Um, we had some updates from our PR coordinator. She unveiled a new website, which I think everyone kind of agrees is pretty amazing. She did a great job with that. Kudos to everyone that worked on that. Um, she also included on that, which I see is up and running, a new community email list and set up. So you can go to the website. And for people that are in the district that may not have kids in the district, they can request to be put on a district by emailing list now and get um, updates from the district. So I think that's a nice feature to add. Um, we are also apparently going to be featured in an upcoming Walking Journal journal article on how we've been able to successfully teach throughout the pandemic. Um, do you have any idea when that's actually supposed to be coming? It goes to print February 17th, I believe, but he said it'll probably be online before that and it should be an email. Awesome. So it sounds like that was pretty, um, could be a, a very nice, nice feather in our cap next up. So looking forward to the journal printing. Um, and then also excited we had three um, employees in the district that were nominated for the Purple Leadership Awards and two of the three made it to the finalist level. We'll find out the other one um, if they actually get those awards. So that is pretty awesome too. Um, and then we just talked about 4K promotion. I think that was going well. Kate's done a really great job uh, doing promotion for the 4K and already has enrollees signed up um, already. Her and Katie and Caitlin are working on a district-wide quarterly newsletter that will be mailed. Um, and when we had discussions about upcoming PR stars and such of that. And we discussed the Eagle Business Association membership and the benefits um, that we can have to be members there. We also have our therapy dog is going to be going to New Orleans in March to do a national, a national convention talking about therapy dog program. So we'll be some good PR before and after that trip as well. So. And just to um, add on to your 4K, the next information night is this Thursday. Oh, yes. Yeah, with the other one had to be virtual because it was a snow day, this one's live. And she did a fabulous job um, making that virtual.
virtual because of the snow day. And last I checked, it was like well over 500 viewers on that. It, it, it's been getting a lot of traffic. So that was just a great, should be great job there. Okay, thank you. Uh, curriculum policy met on February 2nd. Christiana. Uh, yes. So we had a couple of agenda items that were tabled. Um, just some things came up where the administrators could fill us in completely. So we'll recheck on those at the next meeting. One thing we were able to cover was the summer um, scholars program that Katie has kind of put her heart into. Um, it's a resemblance of a summer school option. And so she, I think, left with a lot of feedback from all of us of kind of ideas and what we want to see. Um, specifically finances and budget ideas for that type of stuff. Um, and so I think we're just going to kind of, we shift it off to finance and it's probably going to come back to us and um, we'll keep working through it until we get there. Buildings and grounds met tonight before this meeting, Michael? Yeah, we talked about like, um, kind of continuation from last month. We, Discuss what our current fleet is for the district um, and exactly the purpose of each vehicle, uh, ensuring that you know, we're not oversized or undersized in any way. Um, definitely yeah, home through that, we're good. Um, we did discuss the bipolar ionization generator. Uh, Rich was providing some updates. It sounds like we're going to um, find out how much it would cost to bring someone in to give us uh, an actual estimate. Um, and then Missy had brought up the fact is, is there a value add here sort of return on investment? Why would we be doing it? Hopefully we get all those questions answered uh, moving forward. It is an expensive option, but there are other districts around us doing it, so we need to do our due diligence. Um, we asked the question uh, as far as the varsity baseball field goes, if we needed to have a permit to put a post on the dugout. Um, the nice thing here is, is that there's money been generated from of the labor sounds like it would be free. We just need to make sure that we're doing the right thing. Uh, all the rules. So uh, that'll be coming yet. We don't have any. And then lastly, we asked if there's any COVID money coming. It sounds like there's a potential, but like everything, there's nothing for sure. So we would prefer that to the next one. So that's it. Thank you. Finance committee met tonight as well. Tracy? Yeah, so we had a fairly lengthy decision, sorry. Um, but we went through our financial reports, verified a few of the voucher items, and discussed if where we were on debt payment and we are current on debt payment and we are looking actually to be fairly financially solvent for the year and actually it's pretty optimistic. So we're very happy to report that. Um, we discussed our audit review and um, pending some responses and clarifications on a couple of items. Um, we were able to verify that and it was discussed and never got back to, but we think that that probably should be put on the website for the public to see our audit so they know exactly where we stand. Um, we had a discussion on the vehicle fleet, and then it went into another item of lease versus purchase, and we have some items that we will be recommending and taking action on tonight. Um, the first, one of the ones being a purchase option of a food service vehicle, and um, that should, according to buildings and grounds, take care of our fleet for the near future. Um, we also did talk about summer school and asked questions about financial costs and expenses that are associated with it as well as revenue and so that we can be fiscally responsible in our offering of that yet be able to provide our students and our community with the options that they need. We also talked to, did some um, clarification about our time clocks for people as well as a couple of items that have been tabled that we need to do. And that's the reason. Engineering Finance Committee. Oh, 
Yeah. Yes, yeah. we absolutely need this position. Yes. 
And this is also a person who's been in our district, so knows us and is gonna hit the ground running. We don't have a lot of makeup work to do or anything. Well, we the, uh, so the 20% fulfills that requirement? The 20% usage or sharing fulfills our requirement? Yes, yeah. I'm gonna I mean, this is typical. I mean, other districts, for example, uh, we have a we have a uh, license tech that we can hear about other districts who don't or don't have a, uh, a tech coordinator who will rent time so they can access the, the federal funds. So I think it's typical it happens. But I just want to take acknowledge and thank Whitewater School District for um, coming to an agreement and and working with us to provide that um, and help. It's great to have great neighbors that we work with. Their board passed the resolution unanimously, so it was, they're very, they're trying to help us. I, I can say that, I can see that they're trying to help us. And we definitely appreciate that. They said they're great neighbors to have. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. District Administrator and Business Manager reports. Well, a couple of good things. Uh, both Jefferson County and Waukesha County are working on getting uh, teachers vaccinated. Um, it's, it's a relatively actually kind of a slow process, but they are um, out there working towards that. And I think uh, uh, anyone probably working in Waukesha County people are uh, you know, working for Waukesha or they could come over. So they are pushing ahead on that, and uh, I just saw the kind of news that Wisconsin leads the U.S. right now in administering the COVID vaccine. So that's good news, and hopefully that <coughs> corresponds with what Jeff Jefferson and Walker are kind of doing. I think once we have uh, as many as are the possible that we have vaccinated, it's going to take a little bit of pressure around. Uh, this is also uh, February starts open enrollment season. Uh, I did work with Caitlin to put out a message that hey, we're open, we're here, we've got all these opportunities. Uh, financially, we're, we're in a situation where we're going to be here for a long, long time and not an issue at all. So hopefully that pays off. I am hearing uh, that we are getting some kids coming to the district either uh, that were here and you know they're enrolled and coming back or they're leaving the district. So those are some uh, pieces of good news for the next year. And, uh, once we get into uh, budget forecasting and looking at the end of, of, of February, uh, we should know more about it. The only issue with no enrollment is if, if they're in our district and they've been enrolled out and planning to come back, they don't necessarily have to come short of so we may not have that information. If they live here, they get to go here to where they were last year. So some of that some of that information might not be coming back until uh, later on in the spring. Hopefully um, all signs at least are looking positive. Great, thank you. Thank you, just that uh, we had a, a a good month, uh, things are looking up. Uh, the, the capacity of the business office is, is growing every day. Uh, I'm, I'm very pleased uh, with the work of uh, our two uh, uh, people that we hired a couple of months ago. And uh, really, really looking forward uh, catching up on a lot of things. The reconciliations are coming along very nicely. Uh, everything is getting back to where I, I need the, the, the type of service and, and, and uh, you know, structure that I would like to give this district or what we would like to bring to this district. So I think it's, uh, we're, we're saving, uh, potentially going to be saving uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars for next year in, in different uh, proposals that we probably are going to be bringing to you soon. Um, some of it is in healthcare. Uh, I have a very good um, sorry, uh, person, uh, a quote from it's, it's a quote for, uh, for a consortium that we could join, and uh, it, it substantially could, or, or 
lowered our, our expenses in health care, uh, which are quite high in the states. And uh, it could be in the hundreds of thousands, if not three hundred thousand dollars per year. Um, there's other options that uh, I would like to for you to consider. I, I've made notes, and, and you can consult the notes. And if you don't like some of these things, then just you can probably not do some of these things. But I think uh, overall, we we are uh, pretty good. Uh, claims for uh, Medicaid and PCG US. Uh, I have done a few reports that haven't been done in the past, uh, so we're going to get a little bit more money for it. And, uh, we're complete with all DPI reports uh, today. Uh, we issued the W9s and 1099s for 55. Uh, we're almost done with all the training that we have to do. Uh, it was just uh, trying to look at our transportation needs and uh, getting all those risks managed and uh, getting better uh, equipment and, and better you know, safety for our students and our, our staff. Um, CARES Act, uh, I think $62,000 and $64,000 uh, this couple of weeks ago and uh, it's not final, we can get the rest of the money, and we're hopefully going to get a second wave of CARES Act money that could help us potentially, you know, get better better uh, air conditioning and, and, and do other things with, with our staff to, to be able to better, uh, you know, solve the COVID situation. Um, Debts are all paid, cash flow is on track. Uh, we're, we're good to, to the end of the year. We're not going to be probably utilizing at all that uh, line of credit that we issued. Uh, thank you though, it was a very useful line of credit because it, if we had had an issue, we would have had a lot of trouble not paying our, our employees or anything, but luckily we're collecting even more than what I expected. We're at, I expected 29, 20% we have already collected 48% of our taxes for the year, so that's a pretty good time. We, we collect a lot of it, and I think we're, I couldn't ask to be in a better situation than where we are right now. Just let me add one more thing, and kudos to Brad, I think the contingency, we're seeing improvement in the, getting the agendas out and getting the information out on a timely basis and, and we're continuing to work on that. We've set some deadlines which you know may not help some situations. We have one that just to be the end of the agenda. You no, know, it's Friday we're going out with the agenda and so there's an issue there, but uh, I think if we if we consent to this plan, uh, and people are able to get their information to understand and give their information to us by a particular time of day. That helps with getting the agenda out on that Friday. Um, we're sitting together, we we'll get it we'll get it we'll get it. We appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I think we're, we're doing well there, and uh, I've worked with uh, Brad, you know, you know, some checklists to make sure these things are in place to make sure we have to be close to the So, this, this, this month worked out a little well. Good, thank you. Have a question about the, the Medicaid claims. Now, you had mentioned that those are claims that the district should have been doing the past since what, 2016. Is there any possibility of no. back? No. 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 They don't so do. no. We lost out on. If, if you don't report like what happened in, in last uh, quarter of uh, the last year, and I mean just uh, uh, March through. Uh, April through uh, June, uh, it, it was, uh, it's not even possible to open that period again. It's just like by law, they just talk about. Is that something you do annually or? Quarterly and annually. You have to do, and you have to be very regular. If you miss a quarter and you miss it by uh, so many weeks, you're done. You can't do anything for it. And when so, do we see that money back? Uh, it, it, it could take up to a year to get it back. So, I'm, we're getting stuff from uh, 20. If it's a valid, if it's a 
valid um, claim, you can prove it. But um, getting the actual cash flow is, it comes from the bank. So, how much was the claim that you submitted for? You know, are you talking 10000 Probably, yeah, it's, it's, it's like more than four or $5,000, maybe $10,000 a year at the most. It's uh, a regular a check that comes in regularly. Um, that's the new audit is. It can range from eight hundred to fourteen hundred dollars, uh, depending on you know how regularly we're reporting and how completely we're reporting. Because if you were missing stuff, it, it, it costs you, it costs you money. So hopefully with this new arrangement, uh, the, the new reporting that I'm signing or putting in there, it should you know grow our, our collections. Uh, hopefully, five thousand more a year. Sort of and then, when we get that money comes in eventually, what is there restrictions or where does what do we what are we able or not able to do with those funds? Usually, it's it's open because it's just a reimbursement of general funds. What is that? Yeah, it's your Medicaid. It's for special ed is generating it, so it goes to special ed. It's just to cover the cost of what you've already spent. You, you've already spent the control. It's already controlled. Any other questions for Alex Todd? All right. Um, any announcements or board comments? Oh. Hi. Oh. I have one. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I just wanted to share. I just found out last week talking to our good friend, BMDP. He is going to be starting a Palmyra Farmer's Market. And the cool thing about having a Palmyra Farmer's Market is that he's going to be donating back all of the vendor fees he collects to the Save for Kids camp. So all of the vendors that you're going to be seeing and supporting at the Palmyra's Farmer Market are going to be benefiting the kids in the school district. So I thought that was really um, exciting and I wanted to share that. And then I wanted to give a quick shout out to our sixth grade teachers they did an awesome thing for um, all of the sixth graders that earn a 4.0 for the semester. They got a special lunch um, prepared and they got to eat with the teachers as a special treat and a reward for all their hard work. So I thought that was a kind of a fun thing for them that they had, um, had been able to do before. So I wanted to, to thank them. I think that was very much appreciated. And so I loved it. Just an add on to the these farmers market, I believe he's also going to allow any um, yes. fundraising district organization or student organization to have their booth there at no charge. So it's at the BP. Yeah, at the lower parking lot there. Yeah, so that's really nice. And he also asked about having the band come down, perhaps on opening day, to kind of drum off. And I already talked to Mr. Hyde about it. He was excited kind of give the band an opportunity to say thank you to me because he did donate a substantial amount of money to the band program. So, so I think there'll be some exciting and fun things happening after that. And one more new thing that we're on our road to is next year having a WIAA ice fishing team. Yes. Oh, yes. Which, I mean, seriously, this winter would have been the best one for it. I'm not an ice fisherman, but it looks safe out there. You know, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's freezing. So that's kind of cool. It's another yeah. opportunity for our students. I know one of Todd's previous schools in Waukesha. Yeah, Waukesha West. Yeah. So that's exciting. Any other questions? Yeah. 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 OK, you can um, see on here the upcoming meetings. ER February 24th, curriculum policy March 2nd, buildings and grounds, as well as finance of the regular board meeting are on March 9th. And we have a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I want to go through all the minutes and see if Zach has absolutely made every single motion to adjourn. Yeah, I think you have to tell them why. I'm okay with that.